Hey everybody, it's Chuck Arfine. Welcome to the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you by Wintrust. Okay, if you're wondering what the White Sox are getting in new starting pitcher Lance Lynn, oh, it was on full display in his first spring training start here in Arizona. It was just two innings against a Giants lineup loaded with lefty bats for some reason, but Lynn didn't care. Lynn didn't care who was in the box. He didn't care that it was spring training. And he didn't want to come out of the game. Put him on the 2005 White Sox, and I guarantee he's throwing a complete game in the ALCS like Burley, Garland, Garcia, and Contreras. He's so old school, and we love it. So here on the podcast, we're going to talk about Lynn and his throwback mentality and what we can expect from him this season. We're also going to break down the backup catching competition and Michael Kopech revealing that he's been playing catch with Garrett Crochet. Those poor mitts. But first, don't stop believing in Lance Lynn. It's coming your way. White Sox, White Sox, go, go, White Sox. The ball hit deep way back. has put the White Sox ahead. Jimenez leaves the ballpark. You can put it on the board. Yes! We got a chance to do something real special. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. It's time for the White Sox Talk Podcast. Hey, Lance, uh, the, the Giants put a bunch of lefties in the lineup against you. Do you is that something you actually want to see early on, a lot of lefties to you know work against uh, you this early in the spring? No, I don't care who's in the box. Is there any other question for Lance, sir? Ryan McGuffey, Vinny Duber, I see not only a stud pitcher, I see a T-shirt that says, I don't care who's in the box. Lance Lynn is on his way to being a Southside legend. What do you think there, Ryan McGuffey? Yeah, I mean, he he he... He, everything about him fits in with with the South Side. He, I, I, you and I were texting immediately after his Zoom session today, just about how he he reminds me of he reminds me of a 2005 throwback, like a guy who belonged on that staff. And you know, and like just the way he takes the ball, doesn't want to come out of games, is kind of rough around the edges, a little bit bigger. Like everything about him kind of embodies what I think a South Side you know pitcher should be. Yeah, I should say when I asked the question, I was hoping for maybe a longer answer. But then when he just abruptly ended it with that, I'm like, oh no, that's the perfect answer. I loved it. Very much, uh, very much as advertised when he came to, when he, you know, was traded over here, we talked to him right away. And uh, he's pretty much, you know, it's one, one start into his spring training career here with the White Sox. And he's already kind of living up to all of, uh, the, 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 the attributes that he talked about, you know, he doesn't want to come out of the game. So he says, you know, I would have liked to go back out there for a third spring training inning. It's I an mean, exhibition game. Come on, Lance. Like, come on. Seriously. Come on. You don't and have to want- lead. You don't have to lead the cactus league in innings pitched. It's what okay. he wants to, I know what he wants to. And so everything you just talked about golf, I feel like you can see it every time he goes out there. I mean, this is a no nonsense guy. He's here to win. And he's, and listen, he's excited about it. I mean, a lot of the things he said in his press conference today were like, you know, yeah, you know, he, he was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to fight with these guys about coming out of the game, but boy, am I excited to be here. And boy, am I glad that they thought that I was the, the piece that can help them over the, over the hump here. But how about Gabe Kapler and the giants stacking the lineup with seven lefties against them? Like, I don't know what their motive was, but I thought that was kind of interesting, but Lance was like, I don't give a crap. And he ended up facing only seven of the hitters and get retired five or actually it was five of the seven hitters he faced for lefties. He gets strikes out of three guys, Tommy Listella, who never strikes out lefty leads off strikes out Buster Posey, a righty his uh, he takes a swing and a miss and the bat goes flying behind him like 10 feet gets up to the plate again Swings and a miss again, strike three. I mean, Lance Lynn is ready, it seems. I can't wait to watch him pitch now. I mean, I mean, no offense to anybody who, you know, might have been on on the fence a little bit, but 
this is not surprising. Like Lance Lynn has been one of the best pitchers in baseball for the last two years with the Texas Rangers. And that's why the White Sox went out and got him. So I think, you know, he's, he's, he's the shiny new toy. Obviously people are going to be excited whenever he does anything in a White Sox uniform, but this is what was expected was this kind of thing. And so he's going to try and do this, not only, uh, you know, 30 times a year, but nine innings for all of those 30 times a year. And this is why I think he reminds me of 2005. There's nothing flashy about him. Like his stat line, he might have like a 10 K game, but it's not going to look like a Chris sale, 10 K game. It's just going to be gritty. He'll pitch out of a jam in the fourth. You'll think he's going six and a third and all of a sudden it's the eighth. And he's just, he just knows how to pitch regardless of like, no matter what the situation, Chuck, I thought your question was actually very valid. And at first spring training start, we know Gabe Kapler is heavy into analytics and maybe that's what he was doing. Like, let's throw the kitchen sink at him. And Lance Lynn at this point, his career has literally seen everything and a two inning start in, in, in cactus league play isn't going to face him. But the best part about his answer is if you ask that exact same question six months from now, he would give you the exact same answer. And there's another question that he was asked that I think is underrated uh, from today. And it was asked about his particular throwing program because so many pitchers take days off. They don't throw at all. And the question was asked of him, like, are you a guy that just needs to throw every day or do you throw every day? And he said, well, yeah, because quite honestly, like I'm just a big guy and it comes easy. Like he's just one of those guys like picks up a baseball. He's like, I mean, I guess I'll play catch for 15 minutes. What else am I going to do? Who would he been hanging out with on the 2005 White Sox? Burley. <laughs> James? Burley for sure. Coop. <laughs> so he's like a hybrid to me. Like he's kind of like a hybrid of like uh, multiple guys. Like he's a hybrid of like Freddie. He's got the like, just oh, like, give me the ball. don't take me out. Freddie Garcia. Yeah. yeah. He's the no nonsense, non flashy, scruffy beard, Mark Burley. And then, you know, like, Jose Contreras in that stretch of like 20 games where he was unbeaten. Mm -hmm. So like give like, that's your recipe for Lance Lynn. Like to me of 2005. He's also business-like, like John Garland, where there were times where I would ask John Garland a question. And if he wasn't like crazy about the question or didn't really have much to say in the answer, he'd give you five words. <laughs> that would be, yeah. It. Like, I, this is what you're getting out of this question. I'll say this. Like if you had to pick four pitchers in major league baseball today, that would make up the next set of people to do four complete games in the ALCS, which we know will never happen again. Lance Lynn's on the very short list of guys who would be able to do that. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't Dallas Keuchel be on that list too? Wouldn't he would Lucas be. Giolito be on that list too? <laughs> I mean, Vinny, you bring up this is an interesting point. It the difference is Lance Lynn is so vocal about this. Like they yeah, those but guys I mean, might think it, he says it. And let's go. Really, you think Lucas Giolito would come into the post-game press conference and say, yeah, I want to go third inning in my spring training start. No, because he knows, <laughs> I feel like he, he knows better, right? He knows what they're trying to do. He's not going to, he knows he's not going to get that third inning, but uh, I mean, but seriously, let's dial it back a year. Chuck, you sat down with Dallas Keuchel and, and did a whole podcast with him about how he's Mark Burley 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lucas Giolito almost went out and threw a perfect game in the uh, in his first playoff game. I mean, you want to talk about uh, some longevity with the starting pitching arms. The White Sox got three guys they can count on for that. So, so who's more Mark Burley? I thought Dallas Keuchel was like the modern day carbon copy of him, but now Lance Lynn is competing. I don't know what kind of defense he plays. I'm not sure. If I, I think Keuchel. I, I Keuchel's still Burley. Like Keuchel, yeah. because he throws 80. He's a lefty. He's a lefty. Uh, glove winner his numbers closest to 56 um i think lynn drinks <laughs> more than keichel i mean we don't know that for a we fact we don't know that for a fact actually lynn drinks more beer than keichel <laughs> i don't know what keichel drinks lance lynn i feel like is at a bar right now having a well maybe not in covid but in normal social times, distance lance that, yeah in normal times he would be having a beer right now but like it'd be like i could see i could see i could see keiko be like a cocktail guy and i see lance lynn just like give me a cold beer <laughs> need a glass no <laughs> yeah i don't think lance lynn's drinking wine <laughs> no i you know it's gonna be great when we find out lance lynn has a wine cellar <laughs> or no a vineyard way. no way I, I would doubt. Yeah, I agree. He, he drinks White Claw. <laughs> he could. 
I could see Keiko drink White Claw though, like only on a beach. So I agree. You know, Vinny, this might be a separate po- like down the line when the Whites, if and when the White Sox are like plugging away towards the playoffs or setting the rotation. You know, those three guys. Like, if you came up with four names in in baseball, that would be the guys to make up a next set of complete games. Like, all three of those guys are very much in contention. And they've got an old school manager who would love to see it happen. I want to throw out these uh, stats that back up what Lynn was saying. He's like, I don't care who's in the box. Mm-hmm. In fact, in 2020, he had better numbers against lefties. They slashed 182, 235, 312. Righties against him slashed 229, 316, 459, with roughly the same amount of plate appearances. So the other thing with him is, it's his, the, I think why guys get so messed up is that he has multiple fastballs, <laughs> like different speeds. These guys get so messed up. They say, oh, here comes the fastball again, but that's four miles an hour slower, and they, they're late on it. So, The other thing I love about guys like Lance Lynn, he's learning a new pitch right now. Like he's learning how to throw his curveball. Like he's got a new grip on the curveball, and he's, I remember him uh, it, like two weeks ago when he first met the media – talking somebody asked him about it and he was like well i just threw it today and like the only way i'm going to know about it is what if i keep throwing it so i'm just going to keep throwing it and which is a perfect lance lynn answer right like i don't know like i've only thrown 15 of them and it seemed to go okay but how am i going to how am i going to know until i face hitters the the point is he could just look at the back of his baseball card and be like here's my resume but he's still trying to be like he's still trying to find ways to fine tune and be better than he's already been as Vinny already alluded to, being one of the best in the American League the last few years. And he said he said today, too, that, like, what, he feels like a rookie again playing for Tony La Russa. I mean, to- Tony was his manager his rookie year in St. Louis, and they won the World Series, and now he's uh, back at it with Tony all these years later. And I think he said something like, you know, I'm just going back out there like, okay, sir, what do you want me to do? Like, he's a fresh fra- fresh-faced fresh rookie with the Hall of Fame manager. Now he's a, a vet, but he's a, the, that same relationship is back, which I thought was kind of funny. And he said, I, the, the thing that stuck out to me, Vinny, is he followed that up by saying, I'd do anything for him, which shows you the kind of respect that a guy who came in as like a wide-eyed 22-year-old has now at 33 at 10 years of his career that he does, you know, like in theory, he can kind of like go in one ear out the other with a manager. But this is a guy who's like, I got your back, no matter what, at a point in his career where he's already established himself and doesn't necessarily need the Hall of Fame voice like some of the younger guys do. You know, that jumped off the page to me. I've, and I've talked about it with you guys, you know, the La Russa thing, it's every single day I'm seeing other, I'm seeing hints of why he's here. Yeah. And, you know, whether or not sink or swim, we're not going to find out until there's actually games played, but to a man, it's, it seems to be permeating pretty well. And I love how he closes out and again, only two innings, but he's uh, behind in the count three, one, he strikes him out looking walks off the field he wanted more obviously and maybe we should talk about who he was throwing to and open it up to a conversation about who's going to be the backup catcher so he's throwing to Jonathan John lucroy has got three hits already he says in his pro game press conference lance lynn that he's got a history with john and luke roy <laughs> john and luke roy will be the backup catcher <laughs> i mean it's like we we're talking about this race and I'll be honest with you. Zach Collins has looked really good. You're in Mercedes has looked really good, but I mean, they got no shot. John Lucroy is going to be the backup catcher, right? I don't know about no shot, but uh, all uh, as the magic eight ball once said, all signs point to yes. Right. I mean, uh, <laughs> certainly, certainly every word out of everybody's mouth is, is glowing about every guy to be yeah, honest, yeah, Chuck, like yeah. you brought up. I mean, uh, Tony La Russa includes, make sure that he includes Sebi Zavala's name in describing everybody that's impressed him in camp because apparently he has. Um, but and yeah, even really, Carlos Perez, don't forget about him. Yeah. The Carlos Perez old from who was at Winston Salem a couple of years ago. And Jerry Naren said, he's the most all around catcher we have. He might not have been talking about Grandal, but he was <laughs> raving about him. Tony said he's going to be a major league catcher someday. They got a lot of those guys. I, I'm just, a, I, I, on a podcast, I think I said the day the day Lucroy did his Zoom, 
within four and a half, five minutes, I, I either texted Vinny or texted both of you like, okay, like assuming health, like let's assume health and, and a non O for 40 spring, Jonathan Lucroy is your backup catcher. I just feel bad. I, I do feel bad for Zach. Like I, I would love to see him get a, get an opportunity. It just a real shot, but you know what? Maybe he will. But you it know what? It just feels though? like it won't be not here in Chicago. You know, yeah, because yeah, like be, yeah. even if he, I was gonna say, he, even if he was to be the backup, that's not a real shot. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I want to see him get a shot to to play. Yeah, yeah. And to truly know what he is and who he is, because you know, and Vinny's talked a lot about this the last few days, especially with the backup catcher being a hot topic. You know, look at his last full season. It's like, amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I know there's been questions about his ability behind the behind the plate, but it, you don't know what you, like they made a decision to go with Yasmani Grandal last off season that solidified in my opinion, Zach Collins future pretty much on this team. And unless he was going to come in here as the DH in 2021 or truly win a 60 game type backup catcher, you're not paying $73 million to a guy to play a hundred. Then you're right. It's probably, he's probably best suited for a true opportunity somewhere else. Yeah, his timing did not fit with the White Sox window. The White Sox are ready to win right now, and they can't do it with someone who doesn't have, as a catcher, who doesn't have experience like Grandal does or even experience like Lucroy does. And I was looking at this. So Lucroy was great with Milwaukee. And I had not realized that since 2017, so he played 2016 in Milwaukee. Since 2017, he has played for the Rangers, Rockies, A's, Angels, Cubs, Red Sox, and White Sox. <laughs> so that well, John, and he go ahead. He explained it when when they announced his signing that uh, the in, the injury that he had he had a herniated disc in his neck, and it, it happened after the 2016 season or during at the end of the 2016 season. And his numbers since have been terrible. His offensive numbers since have been quite bad. And he admitted that. Apparently after 2019, he got it fixed. He feels fantastic now. He didn't get any opportunity to show that in 2020. And so he wanted to come out and show it uh, this spring. And I mean, the guy's doing well offensively, but he's getting rave reviews for what he's doing behind the plate. I think what Lucas Giolito had to say about him probably was the thing that stood out the most to me about how comfortable and fantastic he felt throwing to, to Luke Roy the other day. Yeah. See, my point was in bringing up all those teams, everybody wanted them. Yeah. No, he's everyone was like, everyone's like, okay, he had a bad year. We'll, we'll, we'll either he'll be better with us or we'll fix him or whatever it was. But it turns out none of those teams could fix him because he wasn't physically healthy. So if it is true, and sounds like it's true, he is healthy. I mean, the Sox might be getting someone really, someone really good. I, I, the, the great version of John and Lucroy could be back in a backup position here with the White Sox. You, 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 to me, when you hear veteran pitchers talk about like what catchers bring, like that's when you know. You heard Giolito talk about it two days ago. Uh, Lance Lynn today saying like I didn't have to do anything because he already knew. Like yeah, it's like a, it's, it, it's a nonverbal communication. Like you can't coach that at this point to, to Zach Collins and your mean Mercedes. You know I think the true very like the the true hurdle for Zach Collins that happened that really blocked him was the emergence of James McCann because the White Sox got him as kind of a stopgap as like a he was like okay, well, let's just get a veteran guy. We'll get Zach ready and bring him up and he'll replace James. And James became an all-star and got $40 million richer with the Mets. And I, and then the, the Grandal thing, I think, was always on the table, no matter what. And, you know, odd man out. It's, it's, look, it's every we've talked about this ad nauseum. Every guy is not – every first-round pick is not going to hit. Every one of these prospects is not going to pan out. Or the expectations of some of these guys, you think they're going to be a five-time all-star – might be a five-year starter, and that's a good thing too. So, you know, like it's just he's a good guy. He's a good kid. I want to see him get an opportunity, whether he flops or sinks or swims. I just don't think it's going to be here. Yeah, I'm sure there are scouts watching the White Sox and all these catchers. I mean, a surplus. I'm going to say this. I'm going to talk to everyone from the – imagine it's 2017, and I say the White Sox have a surplus of catching <laughs> – you would, you, actually, you would not believe what I just said. You would Chuck, not pick, believe. literally pick a like. You can go back. Yeah, go back further. Twenty five years and say the exact same comment. <laughs> they have never ever had a surplus of catching. And then last year they get McCann and Grandal, and now they have so many catchers they don't know what to do, know what to do with them. I mean, Yerman Mercedes, yeah. my boy. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh. No, no one wants to talk about your Mercedes more than I do. Let's talk about Michael Kopech before we wrap things up because he revealed that he's uh, been playing catch with Garrett Crochet, which was, uh, I mean, imagine that. So <laughs> actually, let's, let's play what he said to the media here. I, I just asked him about, you know, Crochet. He seems like the left-handed version to some degree of Michael Kopech. And here's what Kopech said. That guy's nasty, man. I, I don't really know what to say about him other than I'm very, very impressed by him. Uh, I've been playing catch with him the past few days, and he's got more than just a fastball. I'm sure people already know that, but that changeup's just as good. I mean, he's going to be he's going to be part of the future of this game for sure. Um, I'm very excited to see what he brings to the table, and you know, having him in our bullpen and eventually as a starter, I think is going to be a huge step for us. Um, but yeah, he's he's very exciting to watch, and I can't wait for everybody else to see what we're all seeing. Bruce. Well, first I have to ask you, if you're playing catch with uh, with him, what kind of padding do you guys wear in your glove to make sure you don't break each other's hand? I mean, that that can be some exciting uh, playing of catch <laughs> routine, can't it? Definitely. I've I've gone through a couple gloves with him already. I'm pretty sure I still got bruises on my fingers. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's part of it when you got a team full of 100 mile an hour throwers. So. <laughs> You know, if he's got bruised fingers and he's a pitcher, I'm not sure if I want Garrett Crochet and Michael Kopech <laughs> playing catch. His left fingers are bruised, Chuck. He doesn't need those. Don't worry about it. Doesn't need them at all? I mean, <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying, but he is holding a glove. I mean, That's got to be not- the most painful game of catch in the history of baseball between those two guys. We're learning yeah. a lot about uh, playing catch. Guys don't want to play uh, catch with – Aaron Bummer, because they can't catch the ball, literally catch the ball. And I first- mean, let's 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 be fair to Kopech, though. I mean, I can't imagine Crochet's hands are feeling uh, feeling all that swell. Yeah, well, they might be swell. They might be swollen. Um, but yeah, his left hand, his padding, and his glove is getting a workout too. Like, let's not kid ourselves here. Yeah, and you know, in normal times, we actually can watch these guys play catch. Yeah, and that'd be an. I would never want to be in the line of those two. <laughs> Oh but my God! Video, I know. You, you stick your video. stick your phone right up on the uh, on the fence there to to get a little balance while they're coming at. And that's a good way to get a shattered phone or like some pieces of phone in your eye, like wedged in your eye forever. I almost did that. I tried doing that last year, just like with Evan Marshall, and, that, and one came sailing. So like that was my last mem- Like yeah, the idea of doing that, watching it from afar at an angle that I don't have to worry about. Yeah, I'm all in. But trying to film it for uh, for Twitter. Eh. I'm good. Here, yeah. Here's a question. Are we, are we ever going to know what the plan is for Michael Kopech? Because it sounds like Michael Kopech doesn't know what the plan is for Michael Kopech. And Great I, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. I'm saying that's what creative means, right? Is that everything's on the table and he can start in the bullpen. He can end up in the rotation. He can go back to the bullpen. He can start here and there. I mean, it just seems like they're, they're letting, letting him do whatever they think is going to be best. And they don't know what that is in August right now in March. Bruce Levine brought up an interesting point that I hadn't even thought of that the idea, this is what he brought up in the zoom with Kopech and he asked him about it starting the year in the White Sox bullpen in April. And then depending on what's going on with, you know, the number five starter, or maybe not even related to that in May, when the triple A season begins, do you send Kopech down and build up his arm strength to the point where he becomes a starter in the middle of the year. I haven't even thought about that, but isn't what the, isn't that what they're doing in the bullpen? Isn't that what the idea of keeping him in the bullpen is, is well, getting him inning so he can start eventually whenever that might be, whether it's late this summer or in the playoffs or at opening day 2022. I mean, do you want to build him up to two or three innings at a time in the major leagues? Or Tony no? said as much that they might Tony, do it Tony today. Said that. And quite frankly, I think Charlotte is not a healthy place for Michael Kopech mm-hmm. anymore. And if you go back to Rick's opening press conference from spring training, he talked about the idea of sending a guy down to Charlotte and not, you don't really get to see him. You, you, you give him a program, but you don't get to actually see him do the program. So in some ways they're on their own and they're on their own program. I just, unless he's truly struggling to get those innings or that he's just struggling. 
I don't see AAA being a benefit much to Michael Kopech this year. I don't because yeah. early in the season, I think you they're probably going to try to plot out when they're going to throw him. And they may use bullpens as a way to build up his innings, two innings here, three innings there. He may be playing, he may be throwing sim games throughout the season in between, in between his appearances in the bullpen. So, well, from the sounds of it, he's not going to be coming out of the bullpen when Lance Lynn starts. No, no one Lance is. Lynn, Lance Lynn doesn't want Liam Hendricks coming out of the bullpen. <laughs> I mean, his window of opportunity to get into games might be okay. Who is the number five starter? You're going to come in after that person, you know? Well, I mean, you know, like I look forward to the first doubleheader because not from a media standpoint, but from that where you get that extra player or maybe it's extra two players now, they get to come up for like the for the extra roster spot. Normally it's a pitcher and that guy makes a start and he's sent back down. The White Sox have this the envy of baseball where they could start Michael Kopech for two, throw Garrett Cro- Crochet for two, and then let the bullpen kind of fall in line and use the roster spot for like a position player like that though that created the creativity that that's been talked about amongst the front office and and with tony that's got me most curious because that's where i do think i think kopech can get his innings and, and can build up a base to where if the five spot truly is a problem in june you could you could give kopech ramped up for three to four and start him with the expectation that he's going to throw four innings and still going to be okay when you want him in August, September, October. And by then you have him in the, uh, the mindset that he can throw 90 pitches in six innings. Last summer, bullpen day meant Drew Anderson gets knocked around by Cleveland. This oh. summer, this summer, bullpen day might be must-see TV. I, I, I literally, like, I am dead serious when I say that. I, I actually cannot wait to see a seven-inning no, no-hitter. <laughs> seven inning bullpen game with this White Sox bullpen and the curiosity, like there's, there are great arms in that bullpen who might never see the field. Cause you just don't need them. It, it's the bullpen is just, it's just, my God, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. And everyone here is just raving about the arms in that bullpen and uh, what it's funny. And even the, the bullpen guys themselves are just looking around going, we got something really that can be, cause obviously you say it, it's, you know, words are cheap, but talk is cheap, yeah. but um, boy, there's some real potential with this bullpen this year. Like I've never seen before with the white Sox. I think that's a wrap guys. You got anything, any, anything else you want to add? You want to make a t-shirt? Chuck, like, are you going to be, are you going like to be, uh, you're going to be singing the national anthem with Jose Abreu uh, one day? I me like why would you say I would do it? Yeah, you have field access. No, I don't. Field access, <laughs> well, not in 2021, but he's someday. Tiered. Vinny, he's tiered. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm no, I'm not. I, I'm as I like to say, I'm tier one million. I am nowhere wow. near. We're the Vinny and I are still at home, so we're we're tier two, <laughs> <You're> tier two million. <laughs> uh, hey, I can uh, drop this a little a uh, bit a little bit of information. I'm going to be doing two sim games. Not sim games. What am I talking about? webcasts excuse me yeah. sunday and monday i'm doing the white Sox webcasts with rich king so oh wow i thought you were fish. throwing i thought you were gonna throw a sim now i said sim game i have no idea why i said that like yeah I'm, I said, doing a sim. I'm gonna be a part I'm, I'm throwing the curiosity of a bullpen game has me has me really peaked but, but with chuck that, that that's a whole nother <laughs> well talk about a curiosity yeah don't do it <laughs> So here, here's what I should say. Tune Headlines in, galore. tune into the webcast on Sunday when I will be taking part in a sim game on the mound. <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many game. sim games? How many sim games in Major League Baseball history have featured exclusively hit by pitches? <laughs> oh my God, man! That, that that's a full. I mean, the players. That's a packed house. What is it? Twenty percent capacity. Twenty five percent capacity. They will yeah. be. It'll be standing room only at Camelback Ranch. Yeah, to watch that. Who's going to be the unlucky souls who would have, who'd be in the box against me. But I think would, Tim Anderson would happily grab a bat. Yeah. Yeah. It would not <laughs> hurt if I hit them. It would be like, Oh, I barely, was that a fly that just landed on me? Oh, that was Chuck's pitch that just hit me. I did. I barely felt it. It'd be that Bugs Bunny conga line. That's what I have a feeling it would be. <laughs> Thank you very much. Vinnie Doover. That's it. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. For this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you by Wintrust, your home for White Sox checking with free ATMs nationwide. 
go to the special White Sox webpage. You know it, www.wintrust.com slash socks. My thanks to Vinny Duber, my thanks to Ryan McGuffey, and my thanks to Lance Lynn, because he doesn't give a crap who's in the box. Hawk Carrollson, take it away. Thanks, our Chuck. And this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast is over.